It's not about poor performance. And, you know, it's very important that, uh, as Dillian Williams says, uh, you know, we're not asking teachers to reflect on pedagogy and, and look at consistent improvement and change because the performance is so bad. In fact, in many instances, in our case, and again, I'm sure in John's, in, in most instances, the, the pedagogy, the practice is, is very good. And so what we're asking in actual fact is to reflect on even very good pedagogy in order to make it even better. It was healthy for students to know what it was about. And, uh, you know, it's probably more powerful than we realise that, that children think, my goodness, you know, my teacher, uh, you know, is trying to learn something new as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's not so easy for her uh, either. And, uh, and teachers, I think, were pretty you know, pretty upfront with, the, with what they were doing. It's not a big deal, you know, we are all learners. I arrived at my first Smart Borrowing meeting with my videotape lesson in hand, feeling a bit nervous. Um, but what came out of the session was really powerful and um, much more than I think a lot of us had expected. Um, it, it was a chance not only to see, you know, what was going on in the classroom, um, you know, how the lessons were started, what teachers were doing in terms of behaviour management. It was a whole lot of incidental stuff as well. Um, each of our groups were given a focus. I was, um, I think, for the first couple of sessions working on learning intentions. What did I really want my kids to know? What did I want them to take away from what I was doing? But it was so much more than that. You know, you were able to see other teachers and, wow, I really like what she did on the smart board there. And, oh, I haven't thought about doing that in my classroom. You know, all these other learning things came out of it. So, um, yeah, it's been really, really worthwhile and um, been very happy to be involved with it. We're narrowing down aspect, aspects that are creating, like, you know, a great lesson and expanding our repertoire, as well as um, highlighting some of our idiosyncrasies that we uh, don't want to have in our next lessons. Um, for me, I've tended to be a bit of a flat so I'm <laughs> holding my hands for that. Um, also, um, for me also, I noticed that I did a, a lot of um, talk, like, you know, uh, I felt like I was over explaining things, so for me, I've uh, handed it over to the students and created opportunities for them to do more of the explaining in our lessons. I've noticed uh, initially when we were taping, it was focused on me and, and since then I've used it back more at the back of the classroom to get the children because it's not just about me. And, um, it's also noted for highlight for me, particular students that need to be monitored more closely during that instruction time. You know, those um, students that sort of you always say they don't get it or whatnot, or when you're looking at the video, they're not getting it because they're doing something completely different than they shouldn't be. In the beginning, I was, I was a bit afraid of what this would do to my practice. And it's not about picking it to pieces. It, it's about seeing what works, seeing what others do, and then combining them together. Um, I guess for me, um, the thing that I, I found the most surprising was there was aspects of my teaching practice that I didn't realise I was so good at. Um, I, uh, you know, I didn't realise that, you know, if I'm uh, redirecting students that I was, you know, had, had an authority to my voice. You know, there's things that I've picked up that I've realised I'm actually quite good at. But then I've looked at what other people do and I'm going, hmm, that was really good. Maybe I can take part of that add it to what I'm already doing and improve where I'm going with my lessons. Um, from my first video to my most recent, we've been focusing on showing the learning intentions and I can see the difference, not only in how I deliver it, but also in my students. I can see that they're getting a better understanding and that they're being more successful. And that's ultimately what we want, is to make our students more successful. So, for me, smart borrowing has been the vehicle to get me to that point.